Hi everyone, it is December 6, 2017. I really want to thank my subscriber who sent this along to me. It was posted in Activist Post today, written by Katherine Frompovich, Dramatic Visual Medical Proof of Electromagnetic Frequency, Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity in Electromagnetic Hypersensitive Patients. This new study reveals brain abnormalities in those who are hypersensitive to these frequencies. And who knows, maybe this is the beginning of tipping the scale from psychiatric disorder to medical disorder. Yeah, a lot of doctors consider those who are electromagnetically hypersensitive to be psych patients, you've got a psychiatric disorder. You're not really feeling what you are feeling. It's all in your mind. Electromagnetic hypersensitivity or medically known as idiopathic environmental intolerance by the World Health Organization. They describe it as characterized by a variety of nonspecific symptoms which afflicted individuals attribute to exposure to electromagnetic frequencies. The symptoms most commonly experienced include dermatological symptoms, redness, tingling and burning sensations, as well as neuroesthemic and vegetative symptoms, fatigue, tiredness, concentration difficulties, dizziness, nausea, heart palpitations, and digestive disturbances. The collection of symptoms is not part of any recognized syndrome. Electromagnetic hypersensitivity resembles multiple chemical sensitivities, another disorder associated with low-level environmental exposures to chemicals. And I will tell you that I became one of those chemically sensitive persons not due to low environmental exposure of chemicals, but due to psychiatric medications. Yes, it is one of the adverse effects of Prozac, SSRIs. Lovely, isn't it? Both electromagnetically hypersensitive and multiple chemical sensitivities, both are characterized by a range of nonspecific symptoms that lack apparent toxicological or physiological basis or independent verification. A more general term for sensitivity to environmental factors is idiopathic environmental intolerance, which originated from a workshop convened by the International Program on Chemical Safety of the World Health Organization in 1996 in Berlin. Um, the International or idiopathic environmental intolerance is a descriptor without any implication of chemical etiology, immu, immunological, immunological, sorry. Oh boy, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely have brain abnormalities, which is what has been found with electromagnetically sensitive brains. Anyway, uh, those sensitivities or electromagnetic frequency susceptibility. Idiopath idiopathic environmental intolerance incorporates a number of disorders sharing similar nonspecific medically unexplained symptoms that adversely affect people. However, since the term electromagnetic hypersensitivity is in common usage, it will continue to be used here. Okay. Um, one of the most frustrating and truly unfortunate aspects of electromagnetic hypersensitivity is that everyone in the industry which generate, which generate electromagnetic frequencies, radio frequencies, which cause the problem, especially the professional association. And I will tell you... <laughs> hospitals, doctor offices, loaded with Wi-Fi, electromagnetic 
microwave frequencies. It is going to my doctor's office. I, I, I walk out feeling so sick. Anyway, um, these professionals adamantly deny that electromagnetic sensitivity exists and those who suffer with it are psych jobs. That's how my doctor treats me. It's almost when I mention the frequencies, when I mention that I've done the research, when I mention that the World Health Organization has recognized the uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity as a condition, when I have mentioned that there are mountains high of studies, studies mountain, mountains high that prove that electromagnetic frequencies, microwave frequencies cause physiological, biological damage. He literally just looks at me and humors me. Humors me. A doctor won't do this, don't, won't do any research to find out if what I am saying is true. So sad that we have become so low intellectually and just overall walk in the low road here. So Catherine Frompovich says that's got to end now as there are graphic studies proving visual differences in the brains of electromagnetic hypersensitivity sufferers compared with those folks who do not experience electromagnetic hypersensitivity or idiopathic environmental intolerance. So here below are the x-rays showing the differences between the brain of one who is sensitive, that one on the left, and the brain of somebody who's not sensitive on the right. And yes, there are differences. So there was a preliminary press release yesterday of these results and there will be a telepress conference tomorrow in Los Angeles. That's why I'm posting this tonight. This telepress conference will be held at noon in Los Angeles. It is being held by the People's Initiative, Initiative Foundation and they will be taking questions from the media. And the telephone numbers are right here. So the results of this study, Dr. Gunnar Hauser, Hauser and Sylvia Hauser's study, which was published in volume 32 of Reviews on Environmental Health, the name of the paper, Functional Brain MRI in Patients Complaining of Electrohypersensitivity After Long-Term Exposure to Electromagnetic Fields, which I will show you in a minute and I will link to it. Uh, the online published paper includes x-rays of all patients in the study. Um, they actually show MRIs. MRIs. Functional brain MRIs, uh, which is different from x-rays, as far as I know. Okay. Um, but it indicates the severity of hypo, hy electromagnetic hypersensitivity and shows graphically how it physically affects brain tissue. Electromagnetic fields are emitted by the following smart products, appliances, services, any service or device that sends or and or receives voice, data, or graphics pictures using microwave wireless technology, cell phones, iPhones, smartphones, uh, smart meters, uh, being retrofitted by electric natural gas and water utility companies, 
monitoring devices, baby monitors, wearable devices that track and record body data, Wi-Fi, homes, in homes, schools, workplaces, cafes, or other public places is providing it, such as doctors, offices, and routers. God. So for all those electromagnetic hypersensitivity or sensitive patients who refuse AMI smart meters claiming electromagnetic hypersensitivity and have pro se lawsuits before their respective state public utility commissions agencies or administrative law courts. This 2017 study ought to refute the utility's medical and EMF RM, RF experts who still believe in the flat earth society theory when it comes to uh, electromagnetic frequencies, radio frequencies, extremely low frequencies and microwave produced non-thermal thermal radiation waves, adverse health effects that cause... Okay, I just read Oh God, who still believe in the Flat Earth Society theory? All right, Catherine, don't you understand that those are fighting words? Oh God, get off that. All right, I'm getting nervous. All right, okay. Um, well, here, functional brain. This is the study. Uh, patients complaining of electro hypersensitivity after long term exposure to electromagnetic fields. Um, and you can read about this study. Ten adult patients with electromagnetic hypersensitivity underwent functional magnetic resonance imaging brain scans. All scans were abnormal with abnormalities which were consistent and similar. So it is proposed that functional MRI brain scans be used as a diagnostic aid for determining whether or not a patient has electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Over the years, we have seen an increasing number of patients who have developed multi-system complaints after long-term repeated exposure to EMFs, electromagnetic fields. These complaints include headaches, intermittent cognitive and memory problems, intermittent, intermittent disorientation, and also sensitivity to electromagnetic frequency exposure, It's hard, guys, because when you suffer these frequencies, and I know that a lot of you do, it's very hard because every day you're facing your own decline physically, mentally, spiritually, even, you know, emotionally, cognitively. So many of you are experiencing memory problems. So many are having difficulty writing. So many of you are identifying with my difficulty talking, pronouncing words. You can read all about the cases, the 10 cases, but these are the scans. And the damage that seems to be pretty consistent is with the default mode network with hyper connectivity of the anterior component in the medieval um, medial orbitofrontal area orbital frontal area wow Boy, I have courage, don't I, to post these videos that show my decline. Also, decrease of white matter tracks within the right frontal lobe. And finally, decreased flow and or metabolism within bifrontal lobes. Doesn't sound too good, does it? These are the problems. Fragmented, hyperconnected, default mode network right here.
same here, same here, same here. Case six, a left-handed patient was in her 60s when evaluated just a few years before AT&T constructed a cell phone tower about 500 yards from her home. She developed impaired memory, speech, pressure, insomnia, dry eyes, and eventually electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Her history is negative for head injury, positive for mold exposure, and many have claimed that those who have had mold exposure, those who are chemically sensitive, are prone to be sensitive to these frequencies. The, even if you want to click on the link below and just read the conclusion and come over here and check out the references because there's an awful lot of information that um, also shows that these frequencies cause biological, physiological, cognitive damage. I want to say that as I'm trying to do this video, the buzzing is so unbelievably loud. Links are below.